hope everybody's doing good. So I'm back for another review of Real Housewives of Potomac. If you're watching this, please be sure to like the video and subscribe to the channel. But before I get into Real Housewives of Potomac, because this episode was dry as hell, let me address that fucking Nazi ass rally uh, Donald Trump held in Madison Square Garden and managed to pack out. I just want y'all to know this shit is not a joke. This is not the fucking time to play around. He had that fucking white comedian up there talk, finds one black person in the audience. I was waiting for them to show me a picture of him when he was like, oh, that so looks like a lampshade on your head. I don't know if he was trying to imply that that black man was a communist. You know how they had that picture uh, with Mark, the lampshade on his head, or he was talking about his natural hair or some shit like that. And he was like, yeah, no, I'm just playing. It's actually one of my good friends. Last night we were carving watermelons carving watermelons instead of pumpkins near Halloween. Fuck you. And Negro, I hope you got your dumb black ass up out of there. And I hope the only reason why you were in there, even though I know this ain't why, was for research purposes. Because you was a dumb motherfucker to let somebody sit down and insult you like that. And then went on about Latinos, talking about some Latinos, yeah, they like to have babies, they don't believe, you know, in any kind of birth control, they come in just like they come into the country. I said, and the amount of Latino people, when he said the Latinos that were cheering in Madison Square Garden, which doesn't surprise me, because anti-blackness among um, Latinos, Hispanics, whatever you want to call it, especially toward African Americans, even those who just got off the bus from Texas after immigrating over here illegally, will turn in those of a tree, black people like shit right here in New York City. And the number of Latinos there that I heard cheering before he went on about his joke, they ought to be fucking ashamed of themselves. And y'all voting for a candidate, this is the part that kills me. The joke is supposed to be, the joke, was supposed to be that they don't use birth control, yeah, they just have babies left and right, this, that, and the other. These are the same people who are trying to make a joke out of Latinos doing that, but don't want to make birth control accessible, want to make abortion completely illegal, and they're doing quite well in that regard. But that, how is that a joke then? Why is that a dig? Because at the core of this, all of this is their racism. That's why the crowd was a little bit quieter when he said something about Latinos, because it's anti-blackness that drives all of that. Trump don't have to be no Christian. Trump ain't no Christian. He done told y'all he ain't no Christian. Trump can want to be a dictator. All he has to do is hate black people. And that is proven on record. And y'all done following this man, and we gonna be in a worse shape than we are right now. Miss me with the how come it hasn't been done for the past four years. Kamala is not the president. Y'all don't understand how the vice president and president work. Vice presidential power, she's the president of the Senate. She's the tiebreaker. And then she can be in control in as much as Joe Biden will fucking give her, which wasn't a lot. It was the border thing that Trump stopped getting together with his minions and all this other old fuck shit. And I'm pissed. And I'm pissed that people are acting like this is a fucking joke. It's not. It's not. And my life and black people's lives are nothing to fucking play with. Because we all know if somebody's going to get it bad, we gonna get it the worst. It's not funny to me, it's not cute to me, and I'm really getting pissed off. So I'm just gonna say, y'all need to go out there and vote. This is not a drill. This is serious. And please don't expect no uh, election decision on election night. I'm gonna tell you that right now. I'm not gonna even have my students stay up for that shit because we already know everything gonna be contested. See, year 2000 with George Bush, when I was in seventh grade, waiting for the results because I was supposed to fill it out on paper and they down there in Florida where George Bush's brother is the governor talking about some well, we can't find these votes and this shit and Al Gore's weak ass ain't even had the decency to fight that shit he gonna try to shut Maxine Waters down who was fighting for him in fucking Congress ain't that about a bitch once again they all in it together with their races y'all can keep playing with this shit this colorless and or it's all colorism we, we all black to them I'm just letting y'all know all right, moving on. I had to get that off my chest, and I still ain't really fully over that. I'm going to address that soon enough. Some more. <laughs> anyway, so uh, Real Housewives of Potomac, 
Season 9, Episode 4, uh, Bumping Beds and Bumping Heads. Okay. Karen is not admitting to me or anybody else that she's guilty of anything. Because, why, I mean, why would she? First of all, it's Karen. Even if she wasn't <laughs> in court, she'd still lie about it. Two, but why would she admit anything to y'all before she goes to court? Mia, I know you were a stripper, and I'm sure they came and raided the clubs a few times. And you think if you just, like, admit it, it's going to be, yeah, I should be 30 days in jail, and nah, 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 nah. Like, you think it's no big deal, but whatever. But Mia's so dumb, it's not even worth reading her. It's not. It's just not. So these chicks don't even want to help people. Once again, why doesn't Karen admit it? They don't want to help. They want you to say what you did so you can make a damn fool of yourself on TV and then they'll be in the confessionals. I can't believe she admitted that. Why would she admit that? Girl, you haven't even been to court. They want to be able to get you to say something so they can rip you apart. They're already doing that. Why give them something extra? That's right. Y'all just go ahead and speculate all day long because y'all going to lie about it anyway. So Wendy um, checked Giselle and Jackie for talking about Karen while she was not in the car to defend herself, which I appreciate. Because Jacqueline brought up that, you know, um, Karen was drunk when she called her. Now, this is not the first time that Giselle, in terms of previous seasons, has said, oh, I miss drunk Karen who calls me 2 o'clock in the morning. Like, this ain't the first time we've heard that, but, like, I can't even give Jackie benefit of the doubt because of the shit she pulled in this episode. So, Kiana K is here to advertise for her business. Let's be clear. That's the only reason why she's on this show. I don't think she has any intention of staying longer than one season. If she does, the money just got too good. Her and her man work in the same place, and she was like, my man called me an employee. Ashley starts talking about how she and her husband worked together when she had that kangaroo koala meat uh, <laughs> restaurant called Oz that nobody went, to, well, I worked with my husband, it wasn't good. Yes, because your husband fucking treated you like a child and you were dumb. And it was a dumbass business idea. Anyway, but she said it made her feel the way he called her an employee. I'm sure it does, because I was under the impression this is your business too. Anyway, um, they're getting a house built together. They work together and they're not even engaged. I, I really, I'm telling y'all, I just don't understand. Now, if somebody is willing, and this is anybody, willing to get in the comments and say why they think this is an okay idea, let me know. I just don't, this contractually, I'm going to tell you right now, you might as well go ahead and just admit you trapped yourself into this relationship. Because I feel like when there is not a marriage to buy a house, I don't believe in even renting an apartment with somebody else, but to buy a house, I'm not, <laughs> I don't know why it does that. Um, to buy a house with somebody you're not married to seems like that shit is going to be messy. Because even in a marriage, it's still understood that, yeah, but it belonged to y'all, and then you can fight for it in court. But this just seems like y'all putting y'all's money in there to build in a house from the ground up, and then you up... I'm sorry, I don't agree with it. I don't, I don't, I don't. And people can say it doesn't matter if you agree. It doesn't. But it does because I'm watching this show and reviewing it. <laughs> um, so I was like, girl, you need to go ahead and chew your foot off and get out. Because I'm going to tell you right now, her talking about he has issues from his marriage, and that's kind of the difference. I've never been married, and there's still stuff he deals with. I said, that is a noticeable red flag. I'm just saying. So Wendy is expecting a fun birthday. That's a pipe dream from the gate. These bitches don't know how to have fun. They just know how to shit on each other, and for some reason that gives them glee. That is literally how miserable they are. Because remember when we watched Real Housewives of Atlanta back when Real Housewives of Atlanta was good, before they started putting all these people on that are not from Atlanta, not about Atlanta, Kenya, uh, the other chick, Drew, um, these people, I don't like that. I don't like it. I don't like it. I don't like it. Okay, anyway, but even when they read each other, it was like still like funny. It was like fun. These bitches are just, I mean, granted, it's a different place, but I think this show has run its course. Uh, so they show footage of how Karen's birthdays in years past have been ruined. And she, she said, y'all have my permission to cancel any events for Wendy. Wendy, Wendy laughed and took it well. And good thing, because we didn't know we was going to get all this extra bullshit from, uh, uh, what's her name? Jacqueline. So um, they have a concierge when they arrive. 
for each lady, people that are going to be serving them or, you know, looking out for them. Giselle was like, now this is how I'm used to being treated. I said, bitch, you are so poorly put together and broke and appear broke at that. And you aging about the neck the way white women who work at the gas station and sometimes leave their top open down south. That's how she ages at the neck. It's not, it is not appealing, darling. Mm-mm. Mm-mm. No, ma'am. Your bitterness is bleeding through you. Okay? Now, you did K wrong. I felt like initially Mia with them stupid ass bunk beds. And you did, because she has like six different beds, but none that really fit like an adult person. Girl, bye. Wendy, ma'am, you got a nice room, but this whole idea, this is what I mean by the level of delusion or dismemberment of the brain when it comes to them, that all these women have come together and put their issues aside for your birthday, and I'm glad they did this for me. I'm like, wasn't this Mia's idea to take y'all back just where she's from? It happened to coincide with your birthday, I'm sure based on production, but it nobody else seems to think that that's the reason why they're there. So I'm gonna need you to chill, okay? I can't. Mia planned a trip about her and it happens to be her birthday, bitch, miss me. All right, so Jacqueline starts, and these aren't even y'all's real friends, we can tell y'all ain't friends. So Jacqueline starts looking for her room. So Stassi goes and she's, <laughs> I don't know why this was funny to me. Stassi goes, she's sharing with Mia. And she really don't know it yet. She actually looking for her room. No, she's going to be in the same room with Mia. <laughs> and they, and you know they went in. They were like, this sharing rooms again? First of all, I understand they may have been foster sisters, but they are grown women. I got three sisters. And if we have a house with that many rooms, we might stay up talking a lot of the night, but ain't nobody sleeping in the same room with each other as grown women if we want to do like. I'm not saying we might not sit on the bed and talk and drink and then go back to our rooms. But my thing is, that ain't how grown women, well, that's how some grown women get to <laughs> All right. So Mia's saying um, Jackie is a baby and she has to nurse her and make sure she eats so she can be full in the morning. I said, I mean, like we suspected, we kind of thought y'all were a little gay. I didn't know y'all was full-blown lesbians. Okay. <laughs> um, but y'all sister lesbian relationship is weirding me out. Because here y'all grew up in the same house with Jacqueline's parents. And it seems like they took a girl like Mia in. And then y'all become lesbian lovers. Because, like, the jealousy is more the jealousy of the friendship. As far as I'm concerned. Like, somebody who doesn't really have many other friends. And so they're close to somebody. It doesn't seem like that to me. It seems like... Y'all fuck and then pretend like y'all aren't fucking. So Jacqueline, you're insecure because you know how Mia gets down and you assuming she's sleeping with all her other friends too. I could be wrong. Matter of fact, I hope I'm wrong, but I know I'm not. Anyway, so um, Giselle is going to her daughter's ceremony, um, their cap and gown, like dress ceremonies or whatever, and then returning. And I said, bitch, you must really need this Bravo check. She's going to come back to this. They in fucking Charlotte, North Carolina. What the fuck? Just leave. See, this is what I mean. You got to know even, and I'm saying this as a teacher, okay, who goes to work every day, and I'm a little tired from today. But you have to let people know there's some stuff I'm just not going to do. Because people will know you desperate for money, and we can see it. And Because she has no other way to keep up this lifestyle. Don't think for a second that uh, 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 Jamal's new wife, almost wife, kind of wife, co-pastor, whatever the hell is going on down there, and that, that old monkey shit down there in New Birth. Um, if you think she ain't gonna pull the coattails of any money he sends you, whether he's doing it out of guilt or not, <laughs> yeah, you better get this Bravo check. And them girls grown. Anyway, um, so Jackie is really pissed about the fact that Stassi called her a sidekick. I was like, why is she so fucking mad about this shit? I'm my own person. I'm my own this. Okay. If somebody said that about me, like, I probably wouldn't like it, but I also wouldn't be stressed about it because what I know ain't true. I'm just, I'm sorry. I'm past that point in my life. I am 36 years old. No. <laughs> 
not doing it, not doing it. Um, you can kiss my ass. And I wouldn't be around people I don't like. But that's just me. Not in my personal time. That's what you do at work. <laughs> that is not what you do in your real personal time. Anyway. So, um, they go to drink at the table. Giselle, like we, you know, we get her in the sidekick thing. Honestly, the way Jacqueline went off would make you think they had called her a side chick to a married man or something. I was like, girl, let it go. It's not even that deep. And Stassi is bringing it. It's a is a messy bitch too. But my thing is Stassi can stand on her own. And that's what I like about her. She not running up Giselle's ass like people do or running up Karen's ass like people do. Feeling like they need to hurt and pick a side so they can have a space. And she's carving out a space for herself by just doing her. And I like that because, quite frankly, this show needs something because this is, it's already falling off in the water. No pun intended. Anyway, um, Karen, um, so then, then Stacey out of nowhere says, Jacqueline, you have a lot of beef with a lot of people. I don't know. It may have been edited like that. And she was like, no, I don't. No, I don't. And I'm like, oh, okay. Well, that apparently was the tap in for Karen to address Jacqueline and say how she called her for advice. And now you're going around telling people I was drunk when you talked to me. Giselle said, well, first of all, I want to say it wasn't malicious. Honestly, bitch, it may not have been malicious, but it was unnecessary. Okay, that's number one. Number two, Giselle, you are nobody's barometer, nor do you have any sort of moral clout to be able to say Karen's acting like a mean girl when that is all of who you've been your whole life. That is why you are still trying to act out the Dean of Pledges, a.k.a. at Hampton, because that's where you fucking peaked, and that has been what you've been your whole life. Uh, the light-skinned, green-eyed black girl who may have come from a higher pedigree in Texas and then got into the AKAs probably because her mother was one. And then she going to bully all these other people because she's been miserable for a long fucking time. Okay. I don't like the bitch. And whether Karen is deflecting or not, and we know Karen is deflecting, but the thing is to deflect would mean that, um, Jacqueline brought it up first and Karen didn't answer. Um, but Okay. Um, I was like, I know Giselle ain't talking about Karen deflecting and you go 19 times down that fucking gooseneck of yours. Every time you hear the fucking name Jamal. Okay. Don't pull it. And, and you talking about deflecting girl. Bye. Now Jackie started crying because Karen calls her a flipper. Jackie, you a weak bitch. I had no idea how weak you were. That, sh that made you cry. Fuck her. Like, I don't even understand how you could even let somebody get to you like that. Bitch, no, you're not. You're not. You, I can't believe that you are really sad about that. I think you're mad about Mia's possible side pussy um, and Stassi or whomever. I refuse to believe you are crying over that. Okay, so Stacy fucked up the game bad, didn't she? I like Stacy. I don't care what they say about Stacy. I think people like Stacy are necessary on these shows with impossible bitches. So when she walked in... And was excited about her room. And they were like, oh, it's bump beds. And everybody's like waiting for her to like react. She, I just thought it was so cute how excited she got and happy she was about bump beds. She was like, oh my gosh, I always wanted one. <laughs> I just thought that was so cute. Because I grew up with bump beds. Uh, I grew up in a really small house. Okay, and it was seven of us. So me and my sisters always had bunk beds. I don't think I had my own bed until like my junior <laughs> high school. Like where I just had like a regular bed. Um... So, Stassi, uh, why do you try to make things worse? Because then we get her talking to Jacqueline, and she was like, look, I said you are definitely cute from the neck up. I wasn't trying to say anything about your body or the way you're built. Bitch, yes, you were. <laughs> and now, Stassi, you blending in with this crew with the level of pretending, right? You say something, you're like, what? I don't know what you're talking about. I hate people like that. Anyway. So meanwhile, Jackie is tripping on how Karen reacted. Um, Jackie, Jacqueline, come up off of it. What is wrong with you? Are you on your period? Because whatever it is, it's given serious, like, lame. It's just lame. It's not even worth me describing. Um, girl, it wasn't nearly as bad as some of the shit people have said and done on this show. 
Okay, it does not even make it on anybody's list. Or in Housewives history, you crying over this. Let me tell y'all something. Y'all couldn't hang with the Atlanta chicks. <laughs> None of y'all could hang with the Atlanta chicks. So let me tell you something. They would have tore Giselle to shreds. And Giselle wouldn't have had the gumption she has to go after people in Atlanta that way. Woo, baby, baby. Lord have mercy. Okay. So, um, Stacy is having a tough time. She's talking to Karen about preparing to tell her daughter that they're divorcing. And Karen's like, no, I get it. It's hard. Karen, I'm going to need you to have a little bit more compassion, especially since that's what you're expecting of other people. Because Stacy has, you know, had your back. Uh, and I like Stacey on the show because you do need a balance. You need a balance between the villain and just a nice person, especially on this show for the little bit of time it has left because I really do believe it is running out of time. Only one person who said, well, initially I thought it was only one person who said she wasn't that interesting was dumbass me. I was like, Mia's not interesting. Her fuck shit may be of interest to us to laugh at, but... She's also a dummy. Like, I actually like Stacey because I think she's being herself. I can tell she used to work on the home shopping network. She has that kind of, like, voice, and she's involved, and she's happy about what she's selling. Like, I can tell because my mother watches the home shopping network a lot. Um, so, Karen, you're giving, though, the way you're going around, telling her people, calling her boring, and letting her know what people are saying. You're giving Jackie Christie <laughs> in that first season of Basketball Wives L.A. because God knows – I haven't watched this show, that raggedy show in years. Karen is not your friend. Because Karen, at the point in which, I don't care whether, you know, people go, oh, yeah, you need to rip the bandaid off to tell your kid. That's hard for anybody. It's hard. And no, Ashley doesn't really understand because her kids were practically fucking babies. And she married the man that she wanted her father to be. Catch. Anyway, so they go on the lake, okay? We, we don't care. All right, Stassi, Stacy, and Kay talk because production said y'all sit here and the other group sit there. All right, so um, Kay told Stacy that she did, um, that Ashley had apologized to her for what she had done. So, okay, now, Stacy, we can tell you've seen the show. So you shouldn't be surprised at Ashley at all. But she didn't want to receive it at the time. She said, but she is suing. She was like, DC sued because a prosecution can bring a case like that. And she was like, I'm just waiting on the court date. And then I sued personally. Yeah, because it's assault with a deadly weapon. I agree. And, you know, Unibrow wanted to um, really get on the show. And now you look stupid. Now you got pending charges with a young baby at home. Bitch, please. So Giselle said, no, Ashley brings up the Mother's Day picture Mia, Inc., and Gordon took up. Y'all should also thank Mia for the fact that y'all have something to talk about. Because, Ashley, why don't you explain to us why you aren't fully divorced from Michael? Why you, quote, unquote, try to give other people fucking advice. Your life been fucked up. You up here showing how you shake your ass on TikTok and how you do all these events because I need to make sure my kids are taken care of. Bitch, what? You've been on this show I don't know how long. And the fact that you even doing whatever little dumb shit they showed us with you shaking your ass, it's because you're a black, white girl. And it looks funny to people to see you try to pretend like you can dance. Okay, anyway. Um, but she brings up the picture of Mia Ink and Gordon. Giselle was like, well, look, you have to be sensitive to that because that's a lot for him to take. Then she said she's confused about Mia's situation. And if I'm confused, I know her kids are definitely confused. Giselle, you know what? You are still a pick-me bitch, despite the fact that you don't really get picked. And that's interesting to me. Um, and that's why you can't be a good homegirl to anybody. Like, the level of quote-unquote understanding we, you have for Gordon, to me, is not about Gordon at all. We've seen the way you tried to ruin Monique's marriage, the kind of things you said about Candace's husband, the kind of things you said about Ray. So I know this isn't like, oh, you give a fuck about Gordon. It's just like, wow, Mia's living a life where she got two men after her and I can't get one. And so I'm going to make excuses for this man. And it just, I just can't. You're an idiot. The kids probably understand it better than you. Moving on. Stacy addressed it again. Why she didn't like the fact that Ashley brought up her boyfriend. Um, now, honestly, because it's Ashley, we cannot give her benefit of the doubt. 
but Stacy did explain that she didn't like the tone and the way in which she did it. And because it's Ashley, I can understand that. But because it's Ashley, I would have never shared it with her. And because it's Ashley, I don't expect shit. Okay, and you shouldn't either, Stacy. You should not. So then ghetto hood rat Ash Giselle jumps in and says, well, it was the fact, um, Ashley, that she called you messy that you didn't like. I said, bitch, if you don't shut the fuck up with your ugly raggedy ass. She's ugly inside. She's ugly outside. She has not aged well. I can't. They were talking about Stacey being born. Stacey brought that to their attention. And that, you know what? And Stacey's strong because Stacey addressed it. Um, hard face Giselle, we don't want your advice to Stacey about being with a so-called devout Christian. I'll share my thoughts on this, ma'am. But Giselle was like, I was married to a man of the Lord, and there was a lot of sex going on. Yes, it was. There was also a lot of sex going on when you were dating Jamal after having divorced him for being that kind of motherfucker to you. And he was still fucking everybody else. And you know it. You know it. In my Monique voice. <laughs> How dare you try to act like, oh, you can, girl, bye. You won't be satisfied till every woman in the world gets embarrassed like you. And it ain't gonna happen. All right, Giselle decides to ruin dinner by bringing up, because she's nasty like that. She starts bringing other people. Well, Wendy asked uh, about our relationship while we were in the car, but that was still her way of like bringing Wendy in, okay? And she said she wanted me to deal with it before her birthday, and I'm about to leave to go to the cap and gown ceremony to hurry up and come back because she need that Bravo check because Jamal get married and ain't going to owe her nothing else. Anyway, Giselle brought up the brain um, tumor cancer event. Let me be clear. That kind of thing I think is wonderful. Trust me, people need all the support and help they can get when dealing with cancer. Don't think that just because people have it that somehow the healthcare system is understanding those bills will pile up. And especially when you need research for certain things because breast cancer is more common. And that was still hard for me. My mother's gone through that twice. Um, so I, I want that to be clear. But Giselle, my thing is you didn't care about your event. If the goal was to raise money for this cause, you had no business kicking out the possible donors to your father's cause. cause. People like Stacy. You can tell she got money, okay? People like um, um, Kay, Kay can cut you a check too, I can tell. Stassi, who had her sprinter, could have cut you a check. Those three women alone could have helped you the fuck out. But you chose to embarrass them and humiliate them and kick them out. I wouldn't go to shit dealing with you. And you only apologize because you need a buddy on this fucking show, all right? It wasn't about raising money and it wasn't about your father because you did the exact opposite. You made it about them instead of your father and you took out potential donors. Next. So Giselle, I, I can't. When she left out in that goal, whatever the fuck that was, jump or romp or down to the back, is that something one of your daughters made for you at home at? And you just felt like you should wear it on TV because one of your daughters made it? Because that shit was a hot ass mess. All right, so Mia is introducing her friends uh, to the cast essentially and Jackie said they were talking about how they knew her or whatever and one of the friends said yeah I met her when she was actually getting married to Gordon now the friend to my understanding based on what I saw and heard with my eyes and my ears this didn't sound like that big of a deal and Jackie jumps in and said well I knew her way back before you back when she had the Honda on 22 rims I was like bitch what yeah you you a little too possessive over Mia, and we all know it's because y'all sleeping together, or we suspect that. Um, I suspect that, should I say. <laughs> so Mia tells about the time her and her friend, Joy, um, who's at the table, went out with Karen. She was like, we had a lot of fun. She was like, well, the secret is you butt dialed us. And you said, um, those girls actually think I'm out with Ray. Karen doesn't remember. Who didn't see that coming? Of course. But if anything, Karen, just keep in mind, you in good company with Mia because Mia don't see nothing wrong with cheating on her husband or her man. <laughs> so don't let her read you for that. Anyway, that's all I have. I will talk to y'all soon. Have a great rest of your week. Bye.